coming up this week on the Digital Lifestyle Show at 897. Gary's here and we've got special guest Dan Season from Fully Charged Live, the show, live show that's coming up in a few weeks' time. All things uh, electric powered vehicles, homes, all sorts of stuff. Dan will be explaining to us all about the shows, where they are, there's a couple of them, and uh, what you can see there. Plus, we've got some insider news, Windows insider news, but uh, we will be talking about UMPCs and lots more. So, let's get straight to Gary. Gary, good evening. Good evening, Ian. Uh, and we've got a special show for us this week. Uh, you've got a guest for us. I have Dan Caesar from Fully Charged is uh, on, and we've we've had Dan on before. He's he's uh, CEO of, of Fully Charged, or had co CEO of, of Fully Charged, um, and and we put, he'll he'll explain what Fully Charged is all about when we when we get to talk to him. But yeah, yeah I mean, really really good guy, and uh, we've had him on a few shows a few times, and uh, in in a, in a week or so's time, he's he, well, he's a very busy guy at the moment because there's, he's, there's lots of events going on, which he's c- kind of responsible for running. So. Well, let's go over to to, uh, to Dan now. So Dan, Dan, Dan Caesar, welcome back to the show. It's, it seems a long time since we've had you on. Um, always a pleasure to talk to you. Uh, yes, there's a lot going on in the fully charged world at the moment, isn't there? <laughs> it's 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 a really really busy time. I think I say that every time I I come on, and uh, each year I make it a little worse. We become a bit more a uh, bit more ambitious. Um, but we, you know, we're very, very driven about getting people into these new technologies. So when you have a business like ours, which is kind of a founder led business by Robert and then myself is also equally passionate. Um, we tend to work very, very long hours because it actually means, means something. So I saw quite a good quote uh, the other day when someone was talking about founder led businesses, it's quite hard to compete with them because most companies are quite happy to clock off at, at five on a, on a Friday and forget about it till uh, till Monday morning and that we're not like that uh, at all so that's given us um, some great advantages and obviously as you know electric cars electric vehicles clean energy uh, it's getting more and more topical the, the interest in those uh, sectors is getting hotter and hotter um, so yeah we have a, a fascinating uh, relationship with those technologies to um, borrow a phrase. <laughs> So just for the benefit of some of others who may not know, no, who really charges, that's a shame, but uh, um, mm-hmm. there sure must be a few who, who might. Just give us a bit of background how it how it came about. And um, obviously a lot of it is uh, our, our, our noble friend, friend's uh, uh, invention, Mr. Llewellyn, but uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, I mean, Robert is well known. Um, he's very, very humble, so he probably uh, pretend no one knows who he is. But he was uh, he was Crichton in in Red Dwarf, and he hosted uh, Scrap Heap Challenge for many years as well. And uh, he decided uh, to start a YouTube channel about the energy transition, especially about the role of electric uh, cars within that. Uh, 13, 14 years ago, uh, so this was a brave, brave move. Pretty, pretty early. Even, even Tesla was only just getting started at, at, at that point. Um, I met Robert about seven years into that, into that journey, um, and it was fair to say he'd already built up something of a, of a sort of cult following. I thought the channel, fully charged, was absolutely fantastic. Exactly what the world needed was someone to explain in simple terms what these technologies were capable of. And um, met Robert and said, well you know tell me how it works how many you know have you got a huge team do you make lots of money how does it how does it all kind of work and he said well no it's me and one other person really and uh and i'm not sure it makes any money at all uh at which point uh i said well i'm really passionate about this i'm an ev driver uh already i'm really passionate about uh clean uh, energy um you know if you'd like i can help you and it started as sometimes these things do which is me giving a bit of time for free um and uh then about a year after that it sort of became my life uh, as well, and Robert and I have, have enjoyed a great, great working relationship, g- growing the channel. So it's a first and foremost, it's a YouTube channel. We've just hit a million subscribers, which is which is great. We yeah, get amazing. three five million uh, views a month. Uh, it's genuinely uh, global uh, in in its audience. Only about twenty two percent are in in the UK. Um, and we to make make it make ends meet and to be able to grow it, we've uh, created a series of live exhibitions uh, around the world. So we have six across the world this year and we have lots of other things that we're working on as well but i think that's as a bite-sized introduction to fully charged that's kind of what we're all about so our kind of mantra is stop burning stuff it's all about those post-combustion technologies so it could be an electric car could be an electric bike could be an electric plane even could be a, a heat pump or other electrification of the heat it could be solar batteries etc 
and pretty much all of those technologies are, are, are really um, in the zeitgeist now. And, and talking about um, live shows, it, it's amazing you've actually got the time to speak to us tonight because you, you were just about a week away from uh, fully charged live south. Yeah, we're, we're very, very busy. We have a, a team now, um, a much, much bigger team. There's about uh, across the whole business. So that's the production and the events business, about 45 people uh, around the world. Um, but yeah, even even so, when, when the big event comes around, this is the fifth year of us doing fully charged live. Uh, UK, it tends to draw me into its into its orbit. It's a huge, uh, huge project. So yeah, as you say, we we go on site uh, this Sunday to start building that show, and then it opens uh, next next Friday. So we yeah, we're very very excited. But we've already done the show in Sydney this year, about a month ago, and uh, we are doing a show uh, in Harrogate uh, in in Yorkshire about three weeks after the show. Uh, in Farnborough uh, the weekend after next, so uh, it is full on to say the least. But you know, it's 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 been been incredible. And when we first did Fully Charged Live, we we hosted it at Silverstone um, in 2018. We weren't quite sure what to expect. I thought it would be a success, uh, and it and it was. But people were sort of saying, well, this could be the next motor show, and we were kind of thinking maybe, but we were sort of playing that playing that down because you don't want to build up um, expectation but I think we can say now we've, we've, we've got with these shows you know they, they could be the new home and motor show I think uh, for, for for several territories uh, where we are got rave reviews in Australia and we can't wait to do the UK one uh, the South UK one uh, in uh, the weekend uh, uh, of the um, 28th 29th 30th of April and we're getting to the point now where car companies are coming and saying can we launch our cars uh, at your at your live shows around the world, which is which is quite humbling, really, because these are big organisations, serious organisations with some fantastic new electric cars. To, so to have reached that point five years into this journey is is you know we're very very pleased with that. Um, and yeah, we're still very motivated, but a bit tired today, Gary. I will be honest, a bit tired. <laughs> <laughs> I, can, I can really imagine and and you've got some exciting people coming to um, fully charged south uh, and you mentioned car launches there's some some really good stuff happening um which you've, you've mentioned uh, on, on the shows recently it looks really exciting yeah it's good i mean there's the it's there's quite a breadth to the show so you know if, you, if you're into electric cars you'll be in heaven but if if you're not and you're into uh, sustainability and new technologies uh, more more broadly it's a great show as well we invest very very heavily in in, in the content so I'll probably forget some stuff but we have two stages packed with live, live sessions where people like Robert Llewellyn or other esteemed hosts they, they host sort of experts so that could be on anything from you know the influx of Chinese cars to you know shouldn't we be walking running and cycling more than uh, getting cars to you know how do we uh, replace the boiler so 50 live sessions we've then got uh, this year for the first time a zero carbon kitchen so we're powering a, a kitchen off a, a Hyundai Ionic 5 and we're uh, uh, cooking uh, plant-based foods with a, a very well-known YouTuber in that space called uh, Bosch and those two boys have got about a million followers in their own right we've got Deborah Meaden um, on the electric fire oh. so from BBC Dragon's Den um, so the, the content is is very rich. We have a home energy advice team, which is really popular. We've been doing that our shows around the world. That's the opportunity for people to come with their plans and say, actually, I'm quite interested in solar or heat pumps or whatever, and get answers from uh, independent uh, experts. There's a commercial vehicle zone. There's a kids zone. Uh, there's a two wheel test track. There's a there's a business day on the opening day. And then, as I say, with the EV bit, we've got um, we've got an electric launch pad, which is a whole bunch of cars that no one's seen before in the UK. Uh, electric Alley, which is a roundup of all, all the cars. Electric and Eclectic, which is an area where people convert electric cars. And then probably the, the thing that people come to see more than anything is the manufacturers uh, and uh, test drives uh, as well. So there's just there's tons going on. So we typically find most people like to come for a couple of days to, to, to soak it up really. So it is, yeah, very, very exciting for us. But as I say, I think probably the big story this year is not Deborah Meaden, although that's great. Uh, it's actually the fact that we've got, um, you know, we've got so many car launches. You know, that really is something which is uh, extremely uh, marketable. People are so nosy about new cars. They find them, <laughs> I mean, I, I, I like cars, but I'm not a car guy per se, but people are really interested to see stuff, you know, for, for the first time. So 
Uh, I think we've got about 20 that I don't think have been shown pretty much anywhere else uh, next weekend. So, so that's, um, yeah, I guess that's, that's something we're excited about. Uh, something I'm excited about as well coming coming to the podcast, <laughs> but uh, and we'll we'll come for the show as well, so we, we we can talk a bit more about that after I've been to the show. Um, and and I, I, Ian, I guess will be more excited to hear about fully charged north, which is uh, as you say, it's three weeks after Farnborough. It is. It is. Are you moving the whole thing from Farnborough up to Harrogate? Close, about seventy percent, <laughs> I would say. About seventy percent. We can't quite mandate Ian the people to do both shows. <laughs> Um, but we did strongly incentivize uh, co- companies that were with us in the south to do the north as well, and most of them are, are coming, uh, which is fantastic. So uh, it will be big, very, very big for a launch show, not quite on the on, on the, the scale of the fifth year uh, Farnborough show, but it will have all the same features effectively, uh, all the same features, and then most of the same cars, most of the same uh, exhibits as well. Um, and we're really, I mean, you say it's three weeks later, Gary, for us, it's about three years too late because yeah. we actually, we moved um, from Silverstone in 2019 and, you know, people who were in the southern half of uh, England were, were delighted that we moved further south and people in the northern half were, were crestfallen. <laughs> and we said at the time, look, we, we, we absolutely want to do one in the north. Let's get the, 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 the one at Farnborough uh, set up and then we'll, the next year we'll do one in the north as well uh, and then unfortunately we all know what happened and the pandemic came along so uh, that kind of uh, delayed that so yeah we're really really excited I, I'm a uh, as someone who spent time in in the north it's for me it's, a, it's an amazing part of the world and we always wanted to to bring this show up there so it's long overdue but I think I think uh, Ian you'll 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 really enjoy it. Where, whereabouts in Harrogate is that? It's at the Yorkshire Event Centre so it's oh right, yeah um, so one of the things we like to do with our shows, if we can, is have a good indoor and outdoor element. So it feels a bit like a, a festival. Uh, and also with the cars and test drives and things, it's quite nice mm. to have that kind of indoor out, outdoor feel. And that venue on the edge of Harrogate is got some good exhibition halls, but it's also mm. got some fantastic sort of green uh, green spaces actually. Uh, so no, we're we're really excited about that. So yeah, for for a launch show, it's huge, uh, but it's a little bit smaller than our our show in the south but actually it's got you know massive potential in its own right a lot of the car companies are like great someone's finally doing a show uh yeah. you know, north of birmingham uh so we, we we're really excited we're hoping some of our audience from, from scotland will come down and uh, and everyone from across the north and perhaps the northern part of the midlands and then um some some crazy people will come to both i'm sure and uh and then <laughs> probably, we, probably, probably be me but <laughs> We've also announced the next year we're going to add London in as well. So there'll be three UK events next year. We're doing uh, uh, XL London next year as well. So uh, I think it's fair to say we're we're, we're going for it. Well, hopefully that, that will incentivize Ian to actually move to an evening. We've been trying try for all. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was like two, two, it started off with none of us, and now there's two out. I'm the, I'm the only last one with a petrol engine. So. <laughs> No, Ian, come and say come and say hello. I mean, I mean, what I can say is that what some of the things that we're seeing is a really, really interesting uh, changing of the guard in the car industry. Um, I think it's been, you know, if you kind of got your finger quite uh, on the pulse of, of of the automotive industry, you can see that some companies are geared up to go electric uh, and some are not. And obviously, if you uh, are a pure electric company like Tesla, you can see where they derive their advantage from they've got a singular focus and then there are other companies who are you know still trying to eke out a living out of you know petrol engines and hybrids and and, and diesels and therefore their focus isn't purely on on electric and we see we've seen that tension play itself out over the last five years and what's interesting now is you've got a few at the front who are clear unequivocal we're going full electric you've got a few are kind of humming and harring in the middle and are sort of struggling to make that leap and you've got others that only a handful now, but you've got others who are still in uh, something akin to denial. And that's ch- what's changing now is we're at the point where in the UK at the end of last year, about 16.6% of all new car sales were pure electric. So it's conceivable that that will go up to 20 to 25% uh, by the end of this year. And Norway was about this level, so Norway's the world leader, was about this level um, five or six years ago. And Norway is now uh, in, I think the latest month, was about 85% pure electric. 
So it's going to start to happen more and more quickly. Obviously, Norway is different to the UK. I understand that. But we, we think by 2030, which is when the zero emission uh, vehicle uh, mandate kicks in, we think largely people will be buying uh, electric cars uh, as new at that point. And what's interesting is that the, some of the car companies have decided to, I guess, not engage by making cheaper uh, electric cars. They're struggling to make electric cars full stop, let alone to make them profitable. Um, so at the moment, probably the biggest criticism I would make of the electric car offering is that there aren't too many that are at that that kind of lower uh, yeah. price. Group. Um, and they and but nature abhors a vacuum. So if, if the if the existing manufacturers don't make them, someone else will. And what you're seeing is a you know fascinating move from Asian companies in particular to start to offer those types of vehicles. So this time around at fully charged live, both in the in in the south and and in the north, BYD, who uh, if not a household household name yet in the UK, will be, I think, in two or three years' time. They're the, the biggest uh, manufacturer of uh, battery electric and, and plug-in hybrid electric vehicles in the world, uh, and they're from China. They're, they're coming to both of the shows, uh, North and South. Um, they are bringing their BYD Atto 3 for test drives, and I think if this podcast is going out on Thursday, I think I can say that uh, they'll also be bringing the BYD Dolphin, which is their more affordable vehicle, and that's a, a European first. That'll be the first time it's seen Amazing. in Europe. So that's quite a big, quite a big deal. And um, I think really it's very, very interesting to see how the older guard kind of can yeah. react to to that that change. And and um, what we're seeing is, as I say, people are starting to make more affordable electric cars now. The running costs of electric cars are are generally lower. So actually, on the total cost of ownership, they're actually quite competitive with with combustion engine cars. But obviously, that big sticker price is quite a yeah. puts, puts some people off, and, and certainly, so from our pers- perspective, it's great to see some some cheaper, more affordable uh, EVs coming in there. And you know, if a BYD comes to the market, hopefully VW will up their game to, to name one example, and they'll start to make cheaper, more affordable uh, cars as well. Because let's be honest, the cost of living uh, in the UK at the moment is excruciating. <laughs> yeah, I mean that was that's the one conversation we've had a few times. Uh, you know that. Yeah, I was looking to maybe if I change mine and just got an electric version of what I've got now or something similar, you know, it was another 10 grand on the list price or whatever. And it just makes your monthly prices just, yeah, really high. Whereas I think we talked about the MGs and some of the others that you know, their their high end electrics were similar price to a standard petrol. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we've got um, here at, at my house, we've got an, an MG4. Uh, which has, I think, sold about 15,000 uh, of those in the first quarter of, of this year. Um, and uh, it's a great car. <laughs> it's a great car. Um, I'm, not, I'm not saying that 24,000, which is the starting price, is, is cheap. I'm not saying that at all. But it's certainly competitive with what's out there at the moment. Um, and actually, with all the kit it's got on it and, and how good it is, it's you know it's, it's a fantastic car. It's that kind of next level down though, Ian. It's all it's all the used cars as well. I was talking to a, a used car electric car dealer today. In fact, uh, it's about used cars. And it's about the you know, cars you can get for five grand and ten grand and fifteen grand. Mm. That's that's the thing that we think will be filled in uh, in the next year or two. So MG will be at our shows. Uh, BYD will be at our shows. Um, people like GWM Aura, which is great wall motors, um, as well as on the other end, you've got the Polestars and the Teslas and the uh, the Genesis, the Kias, the, the, the Hyundais, Ford, etc., and Nissan. There's a really, really good, good list. There's a great choice now. I mean, when we first did Fully Charged Live, there were literally 10 cars, 10 electric cars. Like getting over electric cars at that first show was was uh, was a bit easier now because there's now like more like 250. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, it's amazing how it's how it's changed and how consumer attitudes have changed. But yeah, we we're extremely mindful of the fact that we've just come out of one of the worst winters economically uh, in the UK that you could possibly have imagined. So uh, really, our show is about saving money and saving carbon as much as it is about you know some people can afford new cars, you know that's great for them, but most people can't. So we talk about other other things that people can do with their home energy you know, secondhand cars, all those, all those sorts of things as well. So it's exciting, but yeah, we're, we're, I think, you know, Gary will know, know Robert, Robert's a, you know, a really nice guy and we're constantly concerned that we don't want this to be a, 
um, these technologies just to be for, for the middle classes and the upper classes. We just that would be a, a, a terrible outcome. So we're really pleased to see some cheaper uh, technologies coming into each, each market. And you mentioned energy costs there briefly, and that's obviously that's something else that the show really does focus on. I know it's, it's, it's one of your passions, the, the whole home energy side of things. Um, and what can we expect to see from that on that side of the show? Yeah, that's that's been the fastest growing area. <clears throat> you know, we we made a you know, we made a point to really produce more and more home energy content on our YouTube channel. So we have a second channel now, Everything Electric Show, which is uh, almost entirely devoted to, to home tech. Um, and it's kind of like 10 years behind the electric car journey, really. People talk skeptically about heat pumps the way they did about, you know, electric cars sort of, sort of 10 years ago. But there's a lot of interest in it. And um, uh, it's been a, a huge fast growth area. So we have the home energy advice team. We have lots of home energy exhibitors, lots of talks about home energy as well. And, you know, some of the things, you know, might need to invest some money to get a heat pump, although there is a £5,000 uh, grant now in the UK. But there are other things you can do which don't really cost you much at all, um, you know, and so we, we like to talk about all of that. So, yeah, really strong, really strong thread for us, really fast growing area of the show. And, and next year, in fact, all our fully charged live shows will be called Everything Electric uh, instead of Fully Charged Live because we're actually we're, we're looking to more uh, obviously um, point to the fact that it's not just about cars. It's about all of these different technologies. Um, so yeah, for us, the home energy stuff is a is an absolutely you know key plank in our in our in our strategy. So I, th I genuinely think if anyone's you know tech minded or energy minded or car minded, then there's just something for 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 everyone. I think at that show. And and we've been talking quite a bit about energy saving recently, and the, mm. the people know that I've I've recently had a a, a home studio put put in, which is. Uh, one of the key things I, I, I looked at that was insulation, um, and that's been a major thing. And, I, and I've recently switched over from a, an electric powered radiator, which was not the best way of going, to to a, a, a infra power infrared panel, and, and the cost saving on that has been incredible. And it's that sort of thing we, 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 you can see at the show as well. Yeah, I mean, we, you know, the, as you said, that's my my background was the kind of the kind of energy industry, and and um, I got an electric vehicle because I was already into into energy. I was already sort of preaching about about renewables, but you know the the reality is, and I was at a, an event with Ovo Energy in London this morning. The reality is that the the efficiency piece is not glamorous. So politicians don't like to stand next to a roll of insulation or you know to to point at something that isn't there. So they they typically like like to stand next to a big power plant or something. So. It, it has struggled energy efficiency, but we've got the the, the leakiest housing stock in in Europe in the UK. So, you know, if we can if we can solve the insulation piece, that that's uh, you know going to be a huge uh, huge improvement. And then yeah, heat is a is a is a big thing, Gary, as you say. And we there's a lot of focus on heat pumps, and we do think that the air source heat pump uh, will probably make up a considerable part of the um, replacement boiler market. But it's not the only game in town. There are things like infrared heating and, and uh, zero emission boilers and heat batteries. There's a whole range of different technologies. So we believe in the electrification of heat versus just heat pumps alone. So yeah, we cover all of that, but it is quite complicated. I actually, once you've once you've gone through the process of getting your first electric car, most people look back and go, actually, that was quite easy. Uh, <laughs> you know, and it wasn't that hard. It's just, you know, buying a, a new car. And in many ways, it's simpler to use than a, than a combustion engine vehicle. But the home stuff is a bit more complicated because you know we all live in different our houses are different shapes and insulate in different ways and you know and so actually fixing the home is is a is a is a tough uh, a tough thing to do. But and I suppose you've got um, for home stuff as well. You've got massive, much longer times that you keep things. You know, I've got, you know, you have, you have a boiler 20 years or, to, you know, uh, whereas your car, maybe you have a four year lease or something like that. You've yeah. got to think longer term with home stuff. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't want to out myself. I've got solar panels and I've got, um, you know, an agile tariff, electric car, car charger, uh, smart meters. I've got probably eight or nine things related to fully charged in, in, in my house. Um, as you probably would expect, I haven't got quite as many as Robert. If you've seen the episode of Robert's mm. house, he's literally got, you know, uh, all the tech uh, under the under the sun. But I don't have, I still have a gas boiler. And because I, I at some point want to move house. Mm. And so didn't necessarily want to make that change. 
you know, and until I was in the house, I was going to, I was prepared to be in for a bit longer. So there's, there's lots of nuances mm. to the house thing. And some people obviously rent, some people own, you know, there's, you know, there's, there's uh, different, different things. The upfront cost can, of some of the tech can be quite expensive. As I said, there is now a, uh, a fairly generous uh, grant for heat pumps uh, in the UK, but also, you know, we've got a bit of a skill shortage in the UK about who's going to, who's going to fit them. We've got a skills shortage in the UK in general, but you know we've got you know that's 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 an issue as well. So it is something where it feels very much like we're back in uh, 2011, 2012. You know, talking about the first Nissan Leaf. Uh, you know, and we have to go on that journey again of kind of educating uh, consumers that actually you know electrification of heat is is the way to go, but you know this is the way to do it. So um, it's it's a it's a really worthwhile you know for us with the YouTube channel events. It's it's a really you know really we feel very positive about what we're trying to achieve. And I, I think, you know, Robert uh, Llewellyn with Fully Charged has has influenced, you know, thousands of people, you know, out of combustion engine vehicles and, you know, to buy solar panels and batteries and so on and so forth. So I think he has had an influence. And I think um, we think the next 10 years we can have perhaps even uh, have a bigger influence still. Mm. Excellent. So if, and if people want to find out about fully charged shows, etc., where do they go? Good question. Well, uh, if you want to watch our episodes, uh, you can go to YouTube and, and search for the fully charged show and everything electric show. It splits, but broadly speaking, the fully charged show is the is the very glamorous stuff like the new cars, so you know, huge wind turbine projects, things like that. Uh, in the next couple of weeks, we've got some special episodes that are coming out, which is showing some of the special cars that are coming to uh, fully charged uh, live. Uh, we've got the Everything Electric Show channel, which is where you can see much more about home technologies. Uh, and then Fully Charged Live is just fullycharged.live. And you can look at the, the, the website to, to get tickets and, and such like for, for, for those events. Um, but yeah, I mean, certainly from our perspective, uh, if you've not been before, uh, it, it really is a fun day out. I think, you know, Gary, you've been probably most years, right? I mean, I the, think I've been ev every year. <laughs> there's, posit there's just an incredible positivity. You know, it, it is it, it is an amazing atm atmosphere there. Yeah, yeah, I agree totally. And 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 it's and it, I say it's a great family day out. That's that's one thing I, li I like about it. I mean, I brought yeah, I brought my young daughters to it before, and it's been fantastic for them. Yeah, it is, it is very family friendly. So, I mean, I think from from my point of view, there's there's all the things we've talked about, like zero carbon kitchen, how many advice team, Deborah Mead, etc. But yeah, the, the the car stuff. If you're interested in that, as I say, BYD are going to be there with the Dolphins. That's a European first. I don't think they've shown the Atto three before. Uh, Great Wall Motors are going to be there with something brand new as well. Hyundai Ioniq six is going to be there. I think that's the first time that's been seen in the UK. MG four we talked about earlier. I think it has been seen here, but not at a show. Polestar P three, fascinating Italian American car called the Era SUV. Fisker Ocean from California. The Jeep Avenger. Uh, Mick Rolino's bubble car. Uh, the Munro Mark one, which is an incredible, um, incredible piece of kit that uh, is threatening to replace the Land Rover Defender. The Vox Lastra. The Abar 500e, Ford F150, the Lotus Electra, McMurtry race car, the Rivian R1T, uh, Smart uh, Smart Number One, uh, Brabus Edition, Subaru Solterra. There's probably about 250 different electric vehicles wow. on on site, so it's you know it's a, it's a pretty extraordinary thing. And then, as I say, if you're into into the home energy thing, you'll be spoiled for choice uh, as well. But I I do think you know I'm very biased. I know, but I just think it's great fun. You know. Robert and the hosts on the channel are really funny. So every live session is fun. People are full of positivity. It's a great thing you can bring your family to as well. Um, and, you know, come away with a, with, uh, a bit more, bit more knowledge than you went in with. Brilliant. But Dan, thanks for spending time with us tonight. I know you're incredibly busy, so we'll, we'll let you have a, have a bit of your evening back. <laughs> right, that, that was good stuff. That was great, wasn't it? Yeah, Dan's great. I always love talking to Dan, and he's he's been so knowledgeable on the, all this stuff. Yeah. We yeah, have to get um, you up to Harrogate for definite. Yeah, I'll have a look at that. Um, let's see. Yeah, so I'll have a look, might have a look at that. Yeah, it's um, it's it sounds. It, I mean, they've always been great shows, but uh, they sound like they get uh, more relevant as uh, as uh, time goes on, doesn't it? Well, I think I think the whole whole EV industry has become more relevant mm. uh, as time has gone on. 
Well, as you said, the, the number of cars has just gone up, up astronomically. I mean, I know I've told this story many a time, but it, sitting when when I went to the first show, and I was actually sitting up with uh, Robert Lowell, Ellen up, uh, up in the Silverstone Gallery, for the, which was the press room uh, at the time. Um, we just had done an interview with him, and he was sitting watching the car park for that. And he 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 generally didn't think anybody would turn up. It, it, and we just saw this car park starting to fill up and fill up and fill up and fill up, and it was just incredible. Um, I think we had the first ever ever EV traffic jam at that on, on that, uh, <laughs> that event. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, yeah, it looks it looks a great event. So I guess you you'll get some coverage from that as well from why why you're there. Yeah, yeah. So I'll do video and audio. For, so do some audio for us and for video for my channel as well. So. Hopefully, I'll get a few interviews. I'm not. Doing, I'm just slightly doing it slightly differently this year because I actually want to do a walk around at the event, to give people more, more flavour what the events like rather than doing static interviews. Um, so I've got set up for that. Um, and as as Dan mentioned, there's a lot, a lot of car launches going on. So the the morning, the Friday morning, when I'm going to be there, there, there is actually a press trail, which is a first, I think. In the, I think when I when I first went there, I was probably the only press person there. <laughs> it, it, yeah. it was it was like that certainly for the first few hours. But this year, I think there'll be a lot more people there, so uh, it's really good. It's really good to see and uh, good to see them expanding. Um, I'm really looking forward to these this uh, this, this show and also the Harrogate one. I, I do intend to get up to Harrogate as well if I can. So. Yeah, that's it. Does sound good. And it's great that they, they, they have both. You know, because you know it. The, the the one in the south is a is a fair drive if you're living up north. So, uh, yeah, it's great that they've they've got both options. Um, right. So, oh, we'll look forward to see what you, you you find out there. Um, just to finish off the show, there was a couple of bits and pieces of news. We did some new builds. Uh, and in case and we, we we were off last week, so um, because it was the Easter holidays and various things, so. Uh, we did take the week off last week, but there wasn't a huge amount to talk about. But uh, one thing I did want to uh, mention, as I was playing in the loft um, uh, and clearing my loft, I did find my old UMPC, uh, which um, I got I did a, I got it working, got in, reinstalled Vista, and there it is working UMPC. Um, and I know you had uh, one of these as well. I did, uh, yeah. You, you had the... the the, well, I think I remember you showed me once the P series one, the it's like a clamshell one. Wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was, it was, yeah, I'm, I've had a few others as well. Over. <laughs> and there's the Origami Experience. That's the mm. special UI that was just for UMPCs. This is in the dock here. It's that bit, but the battery's gone on it. So if I take it out of the dock, it'll it'll die. But yeah, so I did do a video of that, sort of looking back on that, and I actually took took it into work and I showed my apprentice at work and who'd never seen one before and he thought it was amazing why why can't i buy one now <laughs> um it's funny it's now um the ted you know that size device it seems so it, it, even to someone now it seems like an advanced uh, technology but we were looking at all these things at the time i think the, the other one we had was the q1 wasn't it with the bigger slightly bigger screen yeah indeed <laughs> i did no, think no, about no. yeah they were they were great i mean is 2006 2007 you know a full-size windows pc that you could just about fit in your pocket there was i mean what were the phones at the time the trios and that kind of thing no iphones oh, no no indeed no iphones I mean, there's no app concept was there anything like that so if you wanted to to um to do something you needed a pc then you know this was a lot smaller than a big, big chunky laptop and even tablet pcs were were chunky then weren't so yeah, I, I have many fun with mine. So, yeah, I, I did. I did think about see if I could get Windows 11 to work on it, but it's sadly it's 32 bit only. And well below the minimum specs. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> well, Windows 11, I don't think it's to happen. I actually had a quick look on. Um, I went on Amazon and had a look for small form factor. Windows PCs and the, really the, the, there's the odd low cost sort of Chinese one, but there's not really much out there now. You can't buy a six inch or even an eight inch Windows tablet. You can get, I think I saw one that looked, you know, I think it was nine inches or something like that. But and you can't buy you know, small form factor Windows devices like this anymore. 
Yeah, and it's a shame. I, I, I really like the small form facts. So there's a definite use for them. Um, yeah. But I guess I guess that market has been completely won by iPad Stroke and or tablets. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and even from the Windows side, you've got like, like the Surface Go. Um, but yeah, I like this. I like the fact it had the little slide out. You know, it's got the slide out keyboard, and and the fact we we were testing this in the office today. It's got VGA, you know, VGA on there. It would still it, it drove the monitor fine, and this one's actually got a SSD in one of the first devices that have SSDs mm. in. So it's actually quite quick for, for it's got one gig of RAM, and this to works on here really well. It's got the aero glass effects and and everything. So um, I imagine if you needed something like you know Telnet or something like that, you 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 are back in, in you know in 2060 some an ideal device but i would still i would like to see some more interesting form factors coming back for pcs you've either got clamshell laptops or tablets mm. with some kind of two in one and and that's uh, it really. uh, and you think that now that this sort of form factor would be so much easier to do because the, the port sizes have dropped yes absolutely can't they I mean, we could we could go with something with a couple of usb c's on it yeah yeah, and I know you've got, you know, I've got the Duo. In fact, it's funny, the Duo is actually bigger. <laughs> you know, there's, to give you an idea, so there's the, you know, the thing, the, the Duo is a bigger uh, screen than the than the phone, than the than the PC. But, yeah, I know the Android apps and iOS apps have kind of taken over, but I just, I'd just like to see some form factors, maybe not five inch, but maybe, you know, six, seven, eight inch ones with fold out keyboards or you know some kind of ergonomic keyboards it seemed to be in that era there was loads of different ideas and we, we saw them at ces you, you know there was so many different form factors and then it's kind of all just gone it's like, like with the phone market it's kind of homogenized over the time yeah well anyway that's what i would play with i couldn't get any insider builds on it um we did get some insider builds uh, last week we've got two three uh four three five and we also had um a, a build the week before that the the one thing of note on the insider builds is did you see that the i'll get some screenshots here. there's the new um gallery view in uh task manager uh, in file explorer i was thinking whether, whether i can share my screen with this on but yeah so Um, that won't be one. I'll share my screen. Well, my, I still can't get used to this new, this preview version of Teams. It doesn't have the the same screen sharing uh, features as the uh, as the old one. Okay, yes. Yeah, so here's a screenshot from the from the blog post. So as well as you having your OneDrive it, below your home, but in your File Explorer, you've got the gallery which is essentially the same view as you get when you open the Photos app. And it includes local and it includes ones from, um, from OneDrive. And this, the same thing happens as well in File Explorer. So if you if you go into, say, Paint, and do File Open, you can see the gallery view, so you can directly open your pictures from there. So I think that's quite good. I use this. I would use this for, say, um, you know, I've recorded some video on my phone and then I want to take it into the video editor so I can go into the file open in the video editor and then just import that picture straight from OneDrive rather than the way I do it now and sort of open in Photos app, then right click, open in File Explorer, then drag it into the photo, into the editor, the video editor. So I think that's quite a nice idea that, um, as usual, it's, it's the, uh, the, the typical thing of uh, we don't all get the features, so I haven't got this feature yet. Um, but so they did it a control set. So hopefully we'll get that fairly soon because I think I'd actually use that feature. Um, there were some little bits and pieces around the start menu and there's some um, presence sensors. Actually, I was going to ask you about that. I don't know. Is this an, IP, an API you've seen much of the presence sensing API? No, because I, I saw this earlier today. Actually, someone was talking about the presence sensing, and I, I hadn't mm. come across this at all. So I, I, it looks very useful. Yeah, <laughs> especially for home automation type of stuff. But I'm not quite yeah, sure how would you it, use it. I, I, I guess the the machine knows it's it, it's whether first of all your device uh, has the presence sensor on it. Um, it reminds me of the old feature that you used to use with presence control by using a Bluetooth 
Bluetooth device. That used to be in Windows. Mm. I think they got rid of that API, didn't they? But so if you had your Windows phone in your pocket and you were sat at your your laptop and then you walked away from your laptop, Windows phone still in your pocket, it would lock your PC because that Bluetooth connection's gone, so it knows that uh, you're no longer present. Which I think is a great thing because you know you always have to remember to lock your machine if you leave it. Um, not even in the office, I always tend to lock it. But if, if you anywhere, you know, working in a public space or something, you want to make sure your machine's locked. So, but so perhaps that's what this present sensor does. But I don't know how the device knows. Maybe it's to do with the the keyboard or, or you know some activity around that. But anyway, this this new sensor's there, and there there's a security on that. So whether you let the um, let let Divide applications that use that sensor. So I think that'd be a good, a good, uh, a good option if they do that. Uh, but other than that, that those are the main changes. We got a canary build the week before, but there wasn't too much in that one. So and we didn't get a canary build last week either. Although they did say they're not going to necessarily advertise when they do it uh, on as a blog post. They'll, they'll just tweet about it. But I did check and the, and there wasn't any last week. So hoping we'll. We'll see some stuff from that. I think there's the next sort of big event is this build, isn't it? The Microsoft build. I think that's is that the end of May? Yeah, not too far away at all. For some reason yeah. I keep getting muted by on streams, and it's not, not me doing it. So um yeah, it's, I think it's two it's three weeks away, but I believe, yeah. Um so obviously lots lots of things going on in the Microsoft world at the moment, but uh, yeah. there was some exciting exciting announcements a bit, I think. Yeah, I hope so. I hope we will find maybe some more about the future Windows. You you never know. Um, <laughs> they're they're certainly going to keep that close into wraps anyway, and there'll, there'll be no announcement on that till they're absolutely ready for it. Uh, well, I one of the might, we, sorry, I think we know Microsoft are very AI focused at the moment, so I'm expecting some announcements on that line. Yeah, surely they've got to be there yeah, because AI is now into you know, into Bing. It's in the Office app, so um, yeah, sh surely it's got to come to to Windows. I know they've got the the, the Bing AI button in Windows, but it's just a shortcut that. But it would be interesting to see if they actually bring some AI into into the OS. Surely that's going to happen, isn't it? Because that's that's the, that's the buzzword now. It's the it's the dot net, you know, like we had the dot net thing where dot net got introduced into everything in the early two thousands. AI is the thing now. Yeah, indeed it is. And and I've been, actually been using that Bing AI a lot recently. The the, the Bing chat, mm. um, surprisingly more than I thought I would. Um, and it's, it's very it's very useful for certain certain questions where you can't quite find something on the search. Yeah, uh, I, I've, it's an alternative anyway. I quite, I quite like it actually. Um, yeah, so I think um, the, the more they bring that into the OS, it's gonna, it's gonna pop up everywhere. It's, it's bound to be. You, you just, you know, you just know it's gonna be in the OS at some point. Mm -hmm. uh, just a couple of things to finish off. Um, I've got another sound set for my. Uh, for the Uno drum, so this is the the Uno drum is that drum machine I've been playing with out like, for the last few months, and um, I've got a way of customizing to bring your own sample sets into there, um, which is you know which you can't do out of the box, but there is a way of doing it, and I've got this little um, way of doing it now, and so I've created a custom sound set, so I sampled my uh, Yamaha TX7. With all the percussion sounds, so sounds of um, like drums and things, all from the TX7. So it's got that. It's, so it's using the FM frequency modulation. So they don't sound like normal drums, but they do sound very 80s. So I, I sampled a lot of those and built them as into a kit. So you can download them from our download site, and you can you can you can load those straight into the Uno drum. So it's a very a different 80s sounding kit if you wanted to to do a bit of FM synthesis on there with with the with the Uno drum. So uh, they're a free download. So, so will we, will we be getting new music created with that? Uh, yeah, sound? definitely. Yeah, yeah. There definitely, there's um, I'm building up another collection. So, yeah, I've got uh, I've got a few that I've finished off. So, I've got a uh, probably another another collection, maybe eight and nine songs that I've got ready now. So they'll they'll be the the next thing uh, that I'll do in a few a few weeks time. I think I might be able to bring another. 
set of songs out there. This time I've got a few more rock ones and a bit, a bit of even Pink Floyd 70s style ones coming into it. Sounds uh, good with, to with, me. With, yeah, with acoustic drumming. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, so I, I, I expect your version of Miami Vice at some point. <laughs> yes, well, I've got a few. That was the last single was the, um, definitely had the Miami Vice. That was, that was a it song. It did called, actually, yeah, that's true. Yeah, the, the Detective's Choice. That was a yeah, def- definite yeah. Miami Vice type. That did indeed. Um, so I've got to do some new videos. I've got one on um, so one of the Korg synths or the Ranger Korg synths. They had, they brought out this thing called MOS, which was a multi something operate multi purpose operating system based on a system they developed for PC actually in the in the nineties, and they brought it out to the synths in the in the early two thousands, and it's got physical modeling on it. So I've got one of these boards, so I'm going to give that a go and see where I can get from that, because it's kind of, of all the music technologies, we've had analog, we've got wave tables, uh, FM, you know, all the, these synths have been, these technologies are, are all around with new things. Uh, physical modeling is something that was seen as a big hope at the time, but then it's kind of, I think, due to its complexity, kind of disappeared now. So that's rather, so if you wanted to play a trumpet sound, the, the, the way that, you would do it now if you were on your music system you would have gigabyte samples of trumpets and you you get the right one or if you're on your synth it's a recorded um you know a sample of a trumpet but the physical modeling models the uh embouchure and models the valves and everything else to 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 create recreate that sound in an authentic way but to give you that control over it and it seemed like it was a 90s technology and it seemed like this would be the big thing, but it never really took off. So I'm going to have a look at that. What can it do and why it didn't take off? But uh, that's it sounds, I think it's going to be quite an ambitious one, that one. So it might take me a while to do that one. Um, so that's it that all from me. Have you got anything else? Uh, yeah, just, just uh, one, well, one thing really. I, I had to replace my phone. Um, so, and uh, I, I didn't really want to buy a new a new phone because I can't really justify it at the moment. And uh, although technology is moving on, I, I don't seem to think there's been a huge quantum leap, a huge leap, a quantum leap being a tiny leap, but a huge leap forward in technology in the last five or six years, really, since my my uh, the original Galaxy I, I, I've had for a while, my S10. So, uh, so I, I, I went to a company called Reboxed. I don't know if you've come across this, Ian, but they're basically selling refurbished phones. Mm. They they take phone phones in refurbishing them and bring back. And I know there's other people do that, like CEX and uh, Game and people like that who also resell sell um, mobile phones. But but I think it's the refurbishing they're doing, which I think is is really impressive. And uh, I I got a, a what they call a premium grade grade um, S21. I think it's an S21 Ultra, uh, which was like a couple of a grand or so when when it was new mm. and. Um, and this has cost me around about three hundred pound um, for the, for this 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 model, and and it's I say it's, it's two years old, but so yeah, it's, but it looks absolutely brand new. I was really impressed with it when it arrived. Um, you don't get the original box, and you don't get the headphones and things like that, but you do get a power lead, and you you get you get the the pin to t- take this change the sim, um, and and it. This works. I mean, it, and I step up to actually have five G as well because now we've got a, a decent five G yeah. network. And I think I've yeah. mentioned as well. I, I changed um, SIM provider to Smarty recently, which is mm. one of three's arms which have got local five um, G coverage. Um, so yeah, really impressed with that actually in terms of quality. And the phone's very good as well. I mean, it's definitely a step up. The cameras and that are definitely a step up from what I had previously. Um, yeah. But but yeah, no, it's it's it's. it's I'm not sure. I'm really tied in, tied into the Samsung infrastructure now because because I'm with such a heavy smart things user that with my home automation it just makes them nice. To, it's really nice and yeah. easy to integrate that on the on the on the. Uh, that, that's the, the one brand. thing I kind of miss with, uh, using the Surface um, from going from the Note. The, the Note, the Samsung apps are better. Uh, you know. So yeah, I kind of I kind of every now and again I, I do put the SIM card back in the Samsung just for that reason you know, because of the. Yeah. You know, the whole ecosystem they've done a good job with that and of course the ultra is a 6.9 inch screen so it's very quite note like in some ways mm, and it, is, it yeah. will and you can use the s pen on it as well so so mm. essentially it's kind of like a, a note but, it is, yeah. Um, yeah, it's, 
Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm I'm really impressed. It's got a really nice screen on it as well. So, but if if I didn't know better, I'd, I'd think it was an, a brand new phone. It really does look like that. Yeah, yeah so, I think. I think you're right. I think that, you know, I was looking at my, my duo is like a couple of years old now, but you know, there's the note. I, I actually have gone, you know, I've gone back and forward with the note because the note 20 is the last one that they, they made. And it's pretty much the same as the 21 that you've got. It's good enough. You know, there's, I can't see anything. There's, it does nothing from the latest version of the, of the S23 or whatever it is that really, that makes me want to get one of those. And, you know, not when you look at some of the price of them the, the, as a brand new package, it, it just doesn't seem worth it. And also Samsung are really good at keeping up to date on updates as well. I mean, mm. this is getting all the latest UI stuff. So yeah, um, I'm impressed. Yeah. <laughs> I'm very impressed with the service as well. I thought, I thought it came, came very quickly, you know, the, the tracking numbers and everything that came through. And the customer support seems very responsive as well. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm generally impressed. Excellent. Oh, just a final thing I want to mention as well, in the opposite vein to where we started the show, is I, we and my lads went to Alton Park at, uh, the, last weekend, not this weekend, the weekend before, we haven't been on since then, watched British GT Championship. And I was thinking, what a, we went last year, but it was a really good day, apart from the bank holiday Monday British weather, where we, we got sunburn, wind burn, wet, um, wet trench and everything it was it was a difficult british weather day but it was actually a great day so if anybody's especially if you're up in the northwest on park it's great a great track up in this area and uh yeah we had a great day so no you know evs but lots of uh lots of good racing and it was a, a really good day out so i did enjoy that so i definitely recommend anybody if they, a bit of motor racing 25 quid to get in it was it was busy but not ridiculous uh, you could get in the pits and, you know, so we had a good fun day out on there but opposite to how we started the show <laughs> <laughs> but then you know, not, a, not, a, not a lot of it but actually when you're in the great scheme it's not a great deal of emissions it's, it would be better if you had the EV to get there and let them race with the petrol cars well anyway we'll be back same place same time next week really thank and appreciate Dan for joining us earlier on in the show um We'll include a link to uh, the, the, the sites that Dan talked about in the show notes. Uh, Gary, where can we find you? Well, you can find me, well, relevant to the podcast I'd show, uh, my EV owner channel on youtube.com slash EV owner. Um, I'll also be um, on relaunching fascinating tech very shortly. I know I keep saying that, but we've, we've been looking at some techn- new, te- new technology for it in a slightly different approach, so um, we'll be doing that as well. And obviously, you can find me on Twitter at Gary WMA, that's the Gary Two of ours, um, and on Mass.to as well. Not, not that I'm seeing much traffic on there these days, but uh, yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, it seems to be doing that. But uh, yeah, no, all the usual social media places. Excellent. Right, well, we'll be back at the same time, same place next week, and uh, we'll see you then. Take care.